Hello, everyone. My paper is entitled A House Remembers, The Big House, The Troubles and National Memory in Edna O'Brien's House of Splendid Isolation. I'm just going to share my screen with you. There we go. The striking photograph that you see here on the cover slide was taken at a reading that O'Brien gave from the novel in 1994. In our current moment at the fraught political juncture of the decade of centenaries and Brexit, it is timely for us to revisit Edna O'Brien's neglected 1994 State of the Nation novel, House of Splendid Isolation. Edna O'Brien is a writer intent on exploding borders as artificial constructs. And in her novel, she traverses the geopolitical frontier of the border in Ireland, as well as the socio-cultural border that exists in partitioned Irish mindsets. Furthermore, she demonstrates how memory destabilizes the borders between past and present, time and space, for O'Brien is interested in the ways that Irish history repeats itself, and her novel engages with Ireland's troubles, a euphemism applied to both the recent war from 1969 to 1998, as well as the war that preceded it in the 1910s and 20s. During an event in Belfast, O'Brien discussed her framing of the contemporary troubles in the context of Ireland's long durée of past conflicts, stating, people have to know what that war was and why that war. Why? Why did you have British soldiers on these streets? You have to go back and back. Despite taking widely studied Irish politico-historical events as its subject matter, O'Brien's House of Splendid Isolation remains largely overlooked by critics and scholars more than 25 years after its publication. This is a grievous oversight, not least because it is an important example of a troubles novel by a woman writer, and one which is told from the perspective of an elderly female protagonist. O'Brien wrote House of Splendid Isolation when she was in her 60s, and at the time of its release, critics described the novel as a departure from her previous work, claiming that she was not a political writer. Yet O'Brien's writing has always been more political than her unwarranted reputation as a romantic novelist would suggest. For the book exhibits O'Brien's longstanding preoccupation with how the individual is shaped by the idea of Ireland, a crucible of history, memory, religion, and place. O'Brien observes that to write about this experience, quote, means scraping away at the psyche, my own and Ireland's. In particular, she sought to explore the mindset of Northern paramilitaries and the conflicting conceptions of nationalism and national memory between Irish Catholics in the North and South. She remarks, for many in the South, increasingly the IRA were the mindless hooligans who brought shame on their fellow Catholics and a stain on the altar of the nation. On the other hand, O'Brien recognizes that many Northern Republicans feel abandoned by their Southern neighbors. In her novel, the aggrieved gunman McGreevy laments, the South forgot us. As Sophia Hillen discerns, quote, O'Brien touches here upon a sore place in the Irish psyche and voices viewpoints of the situation from both sides of the border that are generally unspoken in Irish society. End quote. O'Brien is interested in probing the often unspoken sources of conflict in Irish life within her fiction, a daring approach that's often been met with the ire of critics. She notes, I have written about strife between mother and child, between husband and wife, and now in House of Splendid Isolation, between two parts of a country. 
Queen's University Belfast has publicly acknowledged the importance of O'Brien's work to the north of Ireland, awarding her an honorary doctorate in literature in 1999, five years after the publication of House of Splendid Isolation. In the novel, O'Brien depicts how the north-south divide is experienced by an octogenarian widow whose domestic life is impinged upon by masculinist republicanism, religious patriarchy, and the cycles of history. Josie O'Mara is the ailing Chatelaine of a crumbling big house in the remote southern countryside who lives as a pariah due to her past romantic liaison with a local priest. Her solitude is disrupted by McGreevy, a notorious Republican gunman on the run from the North. He holds Josie hostage in her own home, which he has commandeered for his use. Quoting W.B. Yeats, Josie tells McGreevy, the Ireland you're chasing is a dream. It doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. It's with O'Leary in the grave. The novel explores the notion of blood sacrifice and indicates that the dream of a romantic Ireland exists only in myth. This is a foundational myth of the Irish state that's resurre resurrected continually in official national memory. Thus, O'Brien recognizes that state memory is a fiction, and it is one which she sets out to disrupt in her own counterfiction. The prologue of her novel issues a challenge to the tidy teleology of official history with a capital H. She writes, history is everywhere. It seeps into the soil, the subsoil, like rain or hail or snow or blood. A house remembers, an outhouse remembers, a people ruminate. The tale differs with the teller. Accordingly, she deconstructs the meta narrative of Irish history by using postmodernist techniques to fragment it and expose its constituent parts, revealing it to be a pastiche. O'Brien enacts this formally by presenting a melange of quotations from Irish literature and song, unfinished letters. Josie's personal diary entries and her uncle's volunteer journal from the War of Independence, which are inter interspersed throughout the book. In their review, the New York Times commended O'Brien for, quote, trying new things in the novel, taking her lavish style apart to work with blunter, harsher tools, end quote. Consequently, House of Splendid Isolation is a challenging but richly rewarding read owing to its intertextuality and its generically complex structure, which fuses the big house political thriller and historical fiction modes. It is her only book to engage with the North of Ireland. O'Brien's personal link to the region began in the 1960s when her first six books were banned in the Republic and she publicly brought her books into the South across the border from Northern Ireland in protest. She resumed her visits to the North in the early 1990s when she conducted extensive research for House of Splendid Isolation, traveling back and forth over the militarized border to interview Northerners, including paramilitary prisoners from both sides of the divide. She recalls, when I was researching, I remember going to Lankesh and talking to Protestants and Catholics and actually people in prison are dying to talk to you. The character of McGreevy, nicknamed the Beast, is based on a near namesake, Dominic Mad Dog McGlinchey, former head of the Irish National Liberation Army, or INLA, whom O'Brien interviewed while he was incarcerated. Despite its rigorously researched premise, however, her novel's subject matter proved to be polarizing. House of Splendid Isolation received mixed reviews and a number of critics questioned O'Brien's authority to write about the North, sectarianism and political conflict. O'Brien devotes a chapter of her 2012 memoir, Country Girl, to the North and comments that to write about the North was to enter troubled waters, wrath and accusation from some, fractured friendships, I admired those who had written about war, but this was a different war, the dirty war, as it has been named. 
She composed and published House of Splendid Isolation during the precarious time of the peace process when SDLP leader John Hume and Sinn Féin leader Jerry Adams conducted secret talks inside a Belfast monastery, while outside tentative ceasefires were broken repeatedly by eruptions of paramilitary violence. O'Brien followed the peace negotiations closely and the same year the novel was published, she interviewed Jerry Adams for the New York Times for a profile entitled Ulster's Man of the Dark. The following year in 1995, she wrote an open letter to UK Prime Minister Tony Blair questioning his perceived, quote, reticence about Ireland and arguing that, quote, Jerry Adams has a relevant place in the political caucus. Fellow Irish novelist Anne Enright marvels at O'Brien's approach to writing about the conflict, noting her admiration for the, quote, sensitivity of O'Brien's cultural barometer. Enright states, in 1994, liberal Ireland was deeply unsettled when O'Brien interviewed the Sinn Féin leader, Jerry Adams. This was a fabulously transgressive take on Northern Irish politics. The curious thing about the Adams article was the way it appeared at the darkest hour, two months before the surprising dawn that was the IRA ceasefire of April 1994. A secret tide had begun to turn in Northern Irish politics. How did O'Brien catch it so well? O'Brien wrote the profile on Adams because she viewed him as a figure who would be key to securing peace. However, she also sought to understand the rationale behind political extremism and paramilitary violence. She examines this difficult subject and its effect on those compelled to live with it in considerable depth via her portrayal of McGreevy's relationship with Josie in the novel. The plot centering on the fraught dynamic between a paramilitary intruder and his reluctant host is recognizable. It is also depicted in two previous Troubles novels by Northern Catholic writers, Bernard McClaverty's Cal from 1983 and Brienne Moore's Lies of Silence from 1990. Like O'Brien's book, these novels explore the Troubles through the experiences of Catholic protagonists taken hostage by Republican paramilitary men. The difference is that McCleverty and Moore received widespread critical acclaim for tackling the subject of the troubles in their books, while O'Brien was frequently lambasted. In stark contrast to the coverage of McCleverty and Moore's work, House of Splendid Isolation was panned by a number of critics who made derisive and sexist personal attacks on O'Brien in their commentary on the book. In her review for the UK newspaper, The Independent, journalist Joan Smith dubbed O'Brien, quote, a tragedy queen whose fiction is characterized by an obsession with the past and with masochistic, erotic melancholy. In a Guardian piece, Irish journalist Fenton O'Toole disparaged O'Brien for interviewing Gerry Adams and scoffed, Edna O'Brien knows a strong, flawed and emotionally unavailable hero when she sees one. In another scornful piece in The Guardian, reviewer Edward Pierce likened O'Brien to a romance novelist, calling her, quote, the Barbara Cartland of long distance republicanism and deriding what he termed her, quote, silly novelettish mentality. Fellow Irish writer Hugh Leonard took things even further by calling across a crowded Dublin restaurant for all to hear that O'Brien was, quote, sleeping with the provost. The misogynistic nature of this criticism is cast into wider relief when we compare the reception of O'Brien's novel with that of her Irish male contemporaries. House of Splendid Isolation is a very different treatment of familiar troubles themes. The childless widow Josie has returned from the nursing home because she wishes to die in her own house and has given up on her life until McGreevy enters it. Their forced proximity fosters dialogue and gradually the two develop a closeness and even a sense of familial tenderness. The Irish Times praised the book as quote, 
an ingeniously constructed and beautifully written Troubles novel, and asserted that, quote, there is no denying the power of the O'Brien pen. At the time of its publication, Irish crime fiction was a male-dominated arena, and the Troubles thriller was its main iteration. However, O'Brien's hostage tale diverges drastically from McClavity and Moore's in that the pivotal relationship is one of mother-son, and this intergenerational story is told from an elderly woman's perspective. In addition, as Fiona McCann points out, O'Brien's sympathetic portrayal of McGreevy counters the, quote, dominant troubles aesthetics, which portrayed paramilitary men as bloodthirsty, atavistic criminals. End quote. Moreover, House of Splendid Isolation differs from previous Troubles thrillers because it is also a big house novel. The book's title indicates that the big house setting is central to its structure as it provides a space in which to rewrite history. Nonetheless, the historical irony of McGreevy, a rogue Republican and member of the North's oppressed Catholic minority occupying the big house, a potent symbol of Protestant British dominance in Ireland, was surprisingly lost on a number of reviewers. In fact, some of them argued incorrectly that the book could not be classified as a big house novel at all. I would contend that Edna O'Brien's House of Splendid Isolation is a Troubles novel of substantial import, which ought to be read alongside those of her male contemporaries. Bernard McClaverty's Cal was made into a film adaptation in 1984, starring Helen Mirren and John Lynch, and Brianne Moore's Lies of Silence was shortlisted for the 1990 Booker Prize. O'Brien's House of Splendid Isolation also garnered recognition from major literary awards. It won the European Prize for Literature in 1995, and the following year it was long listed for the 1996 International Dublin Literary Award. However, while both of McClaverty and Moore's novels have remained steadily in print for more than 30 years, O'Brien's novel was reissued only once in 2002, and it has been out of print since then. Fortunately, I'm delighted to report that 20 years after its last reprint, Picador in America are reissuing House of Splendid Isolation next year in early 2022. In addition, House of Splendid Isolation was made into an audiobook on CD in two, uh, 2014 and read by the renowned Irish actor Fiona Shaw. I can confirm that Shaw's reading is terrific and the audiobook is now available in MP3 format and can be downloaded on Audible. A few weeks ago, I asked O'Brien about the origins of House of Splendid Isolation, and she replied, I did not set out to write a political novel. I never do. I am interested in how the political damages the human. I suppose I've always picked themes and aspects of life that have latent or naked injustice. It often gets me into hot water. Indeed, a defining feature of O'Brien's writing is her willingness to go where others fear to tread. As fellow Irish novelist Emer McBride notes, quote, it has led O'Brien to be hailed as both cause célèbre and national pariah. At a reading of House of Splendid Isolation, O'Brien remarked, I am seen as a genteel romantic writer. Would this were so? But the reality of what I'm doing is this. I am a savage writer with a savage eye. I write about the things we are not supposed to speak about. It is this fearlessness and outspokenness which make O'Brien a powerful storyteller and which have brought her unflinching depictions of modern Ireland to the attention of a global readership. Despite O'Brien's prodigious output and international acclaim, the majority of critical and scholarly attention focuses on only a handful of her books. Much of her work deserves to be more widely known and I would include House of Splendid Isolation on this list. It is also noteworthy as it is the first book in O'Brien's State of the Nation trilogy from the turn of the 21st century, which includes Down by the River and In the Forest. The critical furore 
over these novels echoed the rancor that O'Brien incurred for her previous trilogy, The Country Girls. As Maureen O'Connor observes, quote, discussions often focus on the sensational aspects of these novels, murder, incest, rape. But what is most remarkable about these stirring works is the new emotional depths O'Brien touches in a startling, troubling sympathy newly extended towards the most unsympathetic of characters." End quote. O'Brien speculated that her decision to portray a Republican paramilitary figure from a humanized perspective was, quote, politically unwelcome. During an interview about the troubles, O'Brien acknowledged, quote, it is very hard for people on either side to forget or forgive. She stressed that the situation in Northern Ireland was, quote, the story of all Ireland, not just of the North. That's what I wanted people to understand through this book, that the North is an Irish story, not just a Northern problem. Reflecting on House of Splendid Isolation, she averred, quote, although art may seem a luxury or elitist, I don't think it is. Art can bridge some gap between people of different divides. That is precisely the aim of her novel, a remarkable work of Trouble's art that refutes received knowledge of Ireland's long history of conflict, gesturing towards what O'Brien terms in its concluding words, the future knowledge, the knowledge that is to be. Thank you very much for your kind attention. <laughs>